All right, our next guest. You know these guys from Grantland. They work together on Shea Serrano's show, Primo. Six Trophies is their NBA podcast. You can catch it wherever you get podcasts. It's Shea Serrano and Jason Concepcion. Look at that. What up, baby? Oh, yeah! Super early after spending the night watching TNT basketball. Yeah! Well, how much coffee have you got in you, Jason? <laughs> Uh, none. This is pure. This is just the pure love of the game. <laughs> High on life. Got it. Uh, oh, let me start with the Celtics and the Suns. Uh, I was talking to the guys here and told them that uh, Joe Mazzula at Joey. one point came out and contested the Royce O'Neal Come shot on. after, What's that? after What's the that? whistle. <laughs> is that inspired coaching Come on. or is that insanity? <laughs> I mean... It's funny, and I'm glad it happened, but you can't. What are you doing? <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> Come on, Joe. <laughs> I kind of feel like he's painted himself into a corner where either he's the coaching genius that everyone will bend the knee to, or he's going to get fired very soon. Because you can't be that eccentric and not win. There's no in between. You got to no win. Between. You got to win. You got to win. Yeah, yeah, they have they have to win the championship. If you win the championship, then doing all of that goofy stuff makes sense, and you're like, oh, it worked. Pat Riley dunking his head into the bucket full of water and holding his breath, like it worked. It makes sense. But if you lose, then it doesn't. Then you're like, what? All right, all right, Pat, Joe, you got it. <laughs> but Pat didn't bring the Pat didn't bring the bucket to the sidelines. You know, I th I do think that there is something of the of the Pat Riley approach to Joe. I think he's trying to be like, Hey, like we got to be ruthless. We got to be crazy. We got to do Brazilian jujitsu. Like in the arena, <laughs> you can't let uh, guys just have free shots. Even if it's after the whistle, like we are going for the championship. We got to watch the town 500 times a day and just be about it. Um, and I think that's probably where this comes from. That said, that was, that was just, what if he slipped and fell? That's what I was thinking. <laughs> What if he what if he came down like on on a guy's foot and then twisted his ankle and is out? Zaza. What if that happened, Joe? It'd be a different story. Yes, we agree. <laughs> <laughs> An entirely different story. But it didn't happen. Shay. But Shay, don't you think like the guy yeah. that that fans are going to come down on is not Missoula. It's going to be Jason Tatum. Now, me might be right Tatum. because you can't yeah. get rid of Jason Tatum. You can't fire Joe Missoula. But Tatum's going to take the heat if the Celtics don't win it. Right. Tatum absolutely will. Jason and I were just talking about that on the, yeah. the show this past week. After their after their game against the Nuggets, he had like 15 points or something. He just didn't look right. That You were on the Celtics subreddit, and they're just ripping him to shreds. Like, that's that's what they do. Surprising. That's the guy that they, they go to, which makes sense. That's your best player. That's the guy who's supposed to deliver the championship. And if he doesn't deliver the championship, even more than the coach – that's who that's who Celtics fans will go after. It's him first for sure. He's always at you know he's the point of that of that uh, arrowhead. I don't know, man. I I just feel like when Missoula does things like that, then it's just there's no other does. logic. Everyone's gonna say, well, if they had like a normal coach, <laughs> they, <laughs> they they've had a normal coach though. The normal coach didn't work either. How about if they had a star that could shoot in crunch time? Ooh, ouch. Right. Oh, I, yeah, uh, a second star it's a little overblown, left. though. Yeah. I mean, but the, uh, Brown's been amazing over the last the, – for the entire season, and the left thing has not been as big a, a, of an issue. Turnovers haven't been as big as of an issue. To me, it's like, listen, they blow teams out. They're, they're a historic regular season team. They're killing – teams their net rating is like plus 11 something the issue is close games like what what is what is the game plan in close games denver has a thing that they go to and it works every time that you know the the Jokic murray pick and roll what do the celtics do and i think part of this is a function of the fact that they blow everybody out they don't really get to practice the 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 clutch close game execution and that's where it feels the most shaky 
That that's an awesome take. That the reason why they're not good at close games is because they don't have enough practice at it. Like, hey, I'm never I'm never in a they close game situation. They've played a ton over the last couple of years. No, no, not enough, Stu Not <laughs> not enough to figure it out. Never enough. <laughs> Jalen Brown liked this tweet recently. It was a tweet that said, if Jalen Brown was the number one on a team, he would average over thirty a game and be in the MVP conversation, which is my favorite bar of them all. The MVP conversation bar. Not to be confused with that hack. What's his name? What's that hack's name over at Nick Fox? Wright. Nick, Nick Wright. Wright. There you go. I forget his name because I don't know his content. It's like but a he knows nightclub mine. or something, an MVP nightclub Yeah, or he stole my idea. I mean, it's an easy first, name. Yeah, MVP yeah. conversation bar. Should Jalen Brown be admitted into the MVP conversation bar, Jason Concepcion, would he be on his own team? If he was on his own team, yeah, yeah. I think he'd be in the conversation. He'd be in the uh, – Top five MVP candidate. How good of a conversation? Team? How good of a team? Would What's it be? that? How good of a team would it be? Uh, they'd be a, they'd be like a. If he was the best it, player, yes. he, they'd probably be like a fourth, fifth seed. They'd be they'd be pretty good with a puncher's <laughs> no, I think chance. They're, six, they're, they're seven. If he was on his own team, it would be a Lucas situation where he would be getting crazy numbers, and that's why we're going to talk about him in the MVP conversation. But the team is a seven seed. Like they're not going to win the championship, is how that goes. Oh, they're not going to win the championship. Wow. Well, yeah. I, yeah. I, I'll go one further. I don't even think he'd be in the MVP conversation. I think he'd put up crazy numbers. I think he like thirty. That yes. But the difference between him and Luca is Luca passes. Luca passes <laughs> really well, right? And Jalen Brown <laughs> passes, but not well enough to lift a team. I think beyond, a, like you said, a six or a seven. Shay, I don't. I don't think they win fifty games. If he was the best player on the team. Wow. I think that's like a no, 47 his passing team. Has, his passing's been better this season. Better. Uh, you know, he, he's makes the he makes the easy pass, and I think he makes it pretty well. To be fair to him, it's also like not his role to be like that playmaker guy. Um, I I I Jalen, don't forget this. I was I'm I believe in you. I believe you can win 50 <laughs> games <laughs> as the best player. Don't forget that. <laughs> All right, they, they beat the Suns, as we said last night. The Suns are currently tied for seventh in the West. Is this a case, Shay, of time running out, or is this a tiger waiting to pounce? The Suns? No, yeah. that time is over. It's it's past. As soon as as soon as Giannis blocked blocked Aiton in the finals, that was like, all right, this window has slammed shut. They're not gonna they're not they're not doing it this year, they're not gonna do it. And it's just gotten progressively worse. Since then, as good as it feels like they should be, I think all of us are like, because we've been watching them for so long, because we've been watching Durant, uh, Book, uh, Beal, Beal and Durant more than Book, but it's like we sort of automatically uh, subtract four years from their playing (laughs) career. And we're just like, oh, it's this is 20, this is 2017, it's 2018, Kevin Durant, this 2017, 2018, Bradley Beal. Uh, but it's it's they're not gonna do they're not gonna do anything they're not scary at all. Jason and I talk a bunch about which which of the teams are are you afraid of if you're on a different team, and I don't think anybody right now is afraid of the Phoenix Suns. Like you would happily play them in the playoffs. I would disagree from this standpoint, guys. The Suns, like the teams you're looking at in the West, they've never done it. Talk about not playing in big games. Oklahoma mm-hmm. City, the Minnesota Timberwolves, the Clippers, the Pelicans, the Sacramento Kings. If the Suns play any of those teams, I take them to win that series. Not Denver, but those other teams. Yeah, interesting. I just think the um, that core has never played. This is their first year playing together, mm-hmm. and I think it, that's really hard to do: is be a championship level team that goes mm-hmm. to, that even gets the the conference finals, and this is your first year playing together. I think that's really difficult, and the eye test. And the record test tells me that it's just too high a mountain to climb anyway. Like, uh, they really need to start collecting some of these wins, and it just feels like it's not going to happen. You're waiting for that other gear, and you don't see it. Yeah, last night was a perfect example. The game starts, Kevin Durant is playing incredible, and you're like, oh, cool. If Kevin Durant hangs 50, maybe maybe the Suns can win. But then the shot started, then this, you know, the second half starts. They just start falling further, further. And all of a sudden they're down by 20 points. And you're like, what the, what the heck just happened? Like they're missing, they're missing that beat. They're missing that piece of it right now. I don't think it's there. You guys have a top five for us. Top five 
Forgotten Phoenix Suns. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Now, just to counterpoint, Stu Gatz has also come up with his own top five. Yeah, I have top five Suns we'll never forget. How about that? Okay. Never forget. Okay. Yeah. So th- this is what we're going to do. You guys are going to say five, then Stu Gatz is going to say five, then four, then four, and we'll alternate and we'll play a little fanfare in the middle. Sounds good. Let's okay. do it. Here we go. All Let's right. go. Who's Say number right. five. Oh, five. Number five. Who? Thank you. <laughs> Shay and Jason five. first. Yeah, go. Yeah. Okay. Truck Robinson. <laughs> that's a great one. That's a, that's a great I forgot name. he was a son. Number five, Stugatz. Tom Chambers. Oh, wow. Who stole one of ours. What? How monster, could he be forgotten? Monster never... dunk on Mark Jackson. Number four. Wow. Big O, Oliver Miller. Oh, okay. Yes. Number four, Stugatz. Dan Marley, Thunder Dan. Refresh my drink for a second. So there's his sons that... Refresh my drink. Forgotten. Forgotten. And forgotten Phoenix Suns. Mine are top five sons we'll never forget. Uh, Just making oh, sure. Okay, okay. Number three, okay. Shay and Jason. <clears throat> Dick Van Arsdale. Oh, the original oh, son. Van Arsdale Brothers. <laughs> Number three, DBA. Stugatz. Van Amari Ar- Stoudemire. Standing oh, tall and talented. Hello. Number two, Jason and Shay. Uh, technically a, a Minnesota forgotten legend, but I'm going to call him a son's forgotten legend, Thomas Gugliotta. Tom oh, Gugliotta. Yes. Legend yes. as well. I saw him a couple Stugatz. weeks ago. Good one. Yeah. Number two, Stugatz. Kevin Johnson. <laughs> oh. AJ. And the number one forgotten Phoenix Sun, according to Shay Shilorano and Jason Concepcion, is? My favorite Phoenix Suns player of all time, Raja Bell. Raj. Paul's Raj. Up. Yeah, Raj. Stands yeah, up. That's my vet. Yeah. Hope, hopefully, his no. son comes to the U. The number one son, <laughs> Stugatz, that you will never forget. Charles Barkley. Where is Cedric Sabalas? Cedric Sabalas? Where's Steve Nash? Ah, Nash. Two times. Cedric MVP. Sabalas. <laughs> yeah, too many teams. <laughs> Cedric Sabalas has the blindfold on. He's running around. <laughs> he can't find his way to the arena. Thanks a lot, guys.